moons of Uranus are so exciting. Miranda, Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, and Oberon are the five largest of the Uranus system's 27 moons. Uranus large moons are really weird. They are all candidate ocean worlds that may have internal saltwater oceans, perhaps similar to Ceres and Enceladus, and they may have harbored life in the past. Those five largest moons have dark but surprisingly young surfaces that could be rich in organics, the building blocks of life as we know it. They also appear to be geologically active. They display evidence for recent geologic resurfacing, including possible cryovolcanic activity and high internal heat. Investigation of these moons would enhance our knowledge of where potentially habitable bodies exist in our solar system. The snapshots of the Uranian moon surfaces collected during Voyager 2's brief flyby in 1986 revealed ubiquitous evidence for endogenic geologic activity, in particular on Ariel and Miranda. In this video we will go through all of the Uranus's moon, with more focus on five large moons. Miranda, is the smallest and innermost of Uranus's five round satellites. It was discovered by Gerard Kuiper on February 16, 1948 at McDonald Observatory in Texas, and named after Miranda from William Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. Its diameter is just 470 km. Of Uranus's five round satellites, Miranda orbits closest to it, at roughly 129,000 km from the surface. Its orbital period is 34 hours, and, like that of the Moon, is synchronous with its rotation period, which means it always shows the same face to Uranus, a condition known as tidal locking. Miranda is the least dense of Uranus's round satellites. That density suggests a composition of more than 60% water ice. Miranda's surface may be mostly water ice, though it is far rockier than its corresponding satellites in the Saturn system. Ariel, is the fourth largest of the 27 known moons of Uranus. Among Uranus's five major moons, Ariel is the second closest to the planet, orbiting at the distance of about 190,000 kilometers. According to Cartwright, Ariel is not only the most interesting moon, but the best target for improving our understanding of ocean worlds. Dominated by Chasma, large canyons, there's plenty of evidence on Ariel for a changing surface that might be caused by an underground ocean. Its surface is rich in carbon dioxide ice and is also thought to host ammonia and carbonates. It's possible that Ariel has or had a subsurface ocean with ocean materials that reached the surface. According to Bedingfield, Ariel has features that may have formed from cryovolcanic ice flows while its large canyons appear to have fissures reminiscent of volcanic activity. Umbriel, the darkest moon of Uranus, consists mainly of ice with a substantial fraction of rock, and may be differentiated into a rocky core and an icy mantle. The surface is the darkest among Uranian moons, and appears to have been shaped primarily by impacts. However, the presence of canyons suggests early endogenic processes, and the moon may have undergone an early endogenically driven resurfacing event that obliterated its older surface. Covered by numerous impact craters reaching 210 kilometers in diameter, Umbriel is the second most heavily cratered satellite of Uranus after Oberon. The most prominent surface feature is a ring of bright material on the floor of Wunda crater. Umbriel orbits Uranus at the distance of about 266,000 kilometers being the third farthest from the planet among its five major moons. Its orbital period is around 4.1 Earth days, coincident with its rotational period. Titania, is the largest and most massive Uranian moon, and the eighth most massive moon in the solar system at a diameter of 1,578 kilometers. Titania consists of approximately equal amounts of ice and rock, and is probably differentiated into a rocky core and an icy mantle. A layer of liquid water may be present at the core, mantle boundary. Infrared spectroscopy conducted from 2001 to 2005 revealed the presence of water ice as well as frozen carbon dioxide on Titania's surface, suggesting it may have a tenuous carbon dioxide atmosphere with a surface pressure of about 10 nanopascals. It orbits Uranus at the distance of about 436,000 kilometers, 
being the second farthest from the planet among its five major moons after Oberon. Its orbital period is around 8.7 days, coincident with its rotational period. Among Uranus's moons, Titania is intermediate in brightness between the dark Oberon and Umbriel and the bright Ariel and Miranda. Oberon, is the outermost major moon of the planet Uranus. It is the second largest and second most massive of the Uranian moons, and the ninth most massive moon in the solar system. It is likely that Oberon formed from the accretion disk that surrounded Uranus just after the planet's formation. The moon consists of approximately equal amounts of ice and rock, and is probably differentiated into a rocky core and an icy mantle. A layer of liquid water may be present at the boundary between the mantle and the core. The surface of Oberon, which is dark and slightly red in color, appears to have been primarily shaped by asteroid and comet impacts. It is covered by numerous impact craters reaching 210 kilometers in diameter. Oberon orbits Uranus at a distance of about 584,000 kilometers. It's the second darkest large moon of Uranus after Umbriel. Its surface is generally red in color, except for fresh impact deposits, which are neutral or slightly blue. Oberon is, in fact, the reddest among the major Uranian moons. Cordelia, is the innermost known moon of Uranus. It was discovered from the images taken by Voyager 2 on January 20, 1986, it was not detected again until the Hubble Space Telescope observed it in 1997. Other than its orbit, radius of 20 kilometers and geometric albedo of 0.08, virtually nothing is known about it. In the Voyager 2 images Cordelia appears as an elongated object with its major axis pointing towards Uranus. Ophelia, it was discovered from the images taken by Voyager 2 on January 20, 1986, it was not seen until the Hubble Space Telescope recovered it in 2003. Other than its orbit, radius of 21 km, and geometric albedo of 0.08, Virtually nothing is known about it. The orbit of Ophelia is within the synchronous orbit radius of Uranus, and is therefore slowly decaying due to tidal forces. Bianca, is an inner satellite of Uranus. It was discovered from the images taken by Voyager 2 on January 23, 1986. Bianca belongs to the Portia group of satellites, which also includes Cressida, Desdemona, Juliet, Portia, Rosalind, Cupid, Belinda, and Perdita. Seven these satellites have similar orbits and photometric properties. Other than its orbit, radius of 27 km and geometric albedo of 0.08, virtually nothing is known about it. Cressida, is an inner satellite of Uranus. It was discovered from the images taken by Voyager 2 on January 9, 1986, Cressida also belongs to the Portia group of satellites, other than its orbit, radius of 41 km, and geometric albedo of 0.08, virtually nothing is known about it. Cressida orbits close to a 3 colon 2 resonance with the Eta ring, one of the rings of Uranus. Cressida is the only small satellite of Uranus for which the mass has been directly measured. Cressida may collide with Moon Desdemona within the next 100 million years. Desdemona, is an inner satellite of Uranus. It also belongs to Portia group of satellites, other than its orbit, radius of 32 km, and geometric albedo of 0.08, virtually nothing is known about Desdemona. At the Voyager 2 images Desdemona appears as an elongated object, it may collide with one of its neighboring moons Cressida or Juliet within the next 100 million years. Juliet is an inner satellite of Uranus. It was discovered from the images taken by Voyager 2 on January 3, 1986. It also belongs to Portia group of satellites. Unfortunately, other than its orbit, radius of 53 km, and geometric albedo of 0.08, virtually nothing is known about Juliet. 
Juliet may collide with Desdemona within the next 100 million years. Portia, is the second largest inner satellite of Uranus after Puck. The Portian orbit, which lies inside Uranus' synchronous orbital radius, is slowly decaying due to tidal deceleration. The Moon will one day either break up into a planetary ring or hit Uranus. It heads a group of satellites called the Portia Group, which includes Bianca, Cressida, Desdemona, Juliet, Rosalind, Cupid, Belinda, and Perdita. These satellites have similar orbits and photometric properties. Little is known about Portia beyond its size of about 140 kilometers in diameter and its orbit. Its surface is gray in color. Observations with Hubble Space Telescope and large terrestrial telescopes found water ice absorption features in the spectrum of Portia. Rosalind is an inner satellite of Uranus. It was discovered from the images taken by Voyager 2. It also belongs to Portia group of satellites. Virtually nothing is known about Rosalind, other than its orbit and radius of 36 kilometers. In the Voyager 2 images Rosalind appears as an almost spherical object. Cupid is an inner satellite of Uranus. It was discovered by Mark R. Showalter and Jack J. Lissauer in 2003 using the Hubble Space Telescope. It is the smallest known inner Uranian satellite, crudely estimated to be only about 18 kilometers in diameter. This and the dark surface made it too dim to be detected by the Voyager 2 cameras during its Uranus flyby in 1986. The orbit of Cupid differs only by 863 kilometers from the orbit of the larger moon Belinda. Belinda, is an inner satellite, discovered from the images taken by Voyager 2, it also belongs to the Portia group of satellites, its radius is just 45 kilometers and its surface is gray in color. Perdita, is an inner satellite of Uranus. Its discovery was complicated. It was in photographs of Voyager 2 but Hubble Space Telescope confirmed its existence in 2003. The Moon orbits between Belinda and Puck. Its radius is just 15 kilometers. Puck, is an inner moon of Uranus. The orbit of Puck lies between the rings of Uranus and the first of Uranus's large moons, Miranda. Puck is approximately spherical in shape and has diameter of about 162 kilometers. It has a dark, heavily cratered surface, which shows spectral signs of water ice. It is also the largest inner moon of Uranus. It is intermediate in size between Portia and Miranda. Puck's orbit is located between the rings of Uranus and Miranda. Little is known about Puck aside from its orbit and radius of about 81 kilometers, images showed that Puck has a shape of a slightly prolate spheroid, its surface is heavily cratered and, and is gray in color. Observations with the Hubble Space Telescope and large terrestrial telescopes found water ice absorption features in the spectrum of Puck. It is probably made of a mixture of water ice with the dark material similar to that found in the rings. This dark material is probably made of rocks or radiation processed organics. The absence of craters with bright rays implies that Puck is not differentiated, meaning that ice and non ice components have not separated from each other into a core and mantle. Map. It was discovered by Mark R. Showalter and Jack J. Lissauer in 2003 using the Hubble Space Telescope. The size of MAB is not known exactly. If it is as dark as Puck, it is about 24 kilometers in diameter. On the other hand, if it is brightly colored like the neighboring moon Miranda, it would be even smaller than Cupid and comparable to the smallest outer satellites. Francisco is the innermost irregular satellite of Uranus. Francisco was discovered by Matthew J. Holman and Brett J. Gladman in 2003 from pictures taken in 2001. It was named after a lord in William Shakespeare's play The Tempest. Caliban is the second largest retrograde irregular satellite of Uranus. It was discovered on September 6, 1997 by Brett J. Gladman 
Philip D. Nicholson, Joseph A. Burns, and John J. Kevlar's using the 200-inch Hale telescope together with Zykorux. Stefano, is a retrograde irregular satellite of Uranus. It was discovered by Brett J. Gladman in 1999, the orbital parameters suggest that it may belong to the same dynamic cluster as Caliban, suggesting common origin. It has radius of 16 km. Trinculo, is a retrograde irregular satellite of Uranus. Trinculo is the smallest of Uranus' 27 moons and is approximately only 18 km wide and is roughly the size of Manhattan Island. It takes 749 Earth days to complete an orbit around Uranus with a mean orbit radius 8,504,000 km. Sycorax is the largest retrograde irregular satellite of Uranus. It follows a distant orbit, more than 20 times further from Uranus than the furthest regular moon, Oberon. The orbital parameters suggest that it may belong, together with Cetabus and Prospero, to the same dynamic cluster, suggesting common origin. The diameter of Sycorax is estimated at 165 km based on the thermal emission data from Spitzer and Herschel space telescopes. The satellite appears light red in the visible spectrum. Its rotation period is estimated at about 6.9 hours. It is hypothesized that Sycorax is a captured object. It did not form in the accretion disk which existed around Uranus just after its formation. No exact capture mechanism is known. Margaret, is the only known prograde irregular satellite of the moons of Uranus. Prograde or direct motion is more normal motion in the same direction as the primary rotates. It was discovered by Scott S. Shepard, Prospero, is a relatively small retrograde irregular satellite of Uranus. The orbital parameters suggest that it may belong to the same dynamic cluster as Sycorax and Cetabas, suggesting common origin. The satellite appears neutral, gray, in visible light. Its estimated mean radius is just 25 kilometers. Cetabas, is one of the outermost retrograde irregular satellites of Uranus. The orbital parameters suggest that it may belong to the same dynamic cluster as Sycorax and Prospero, suggesting common origin. Its estimated mean radius is just 24 km. Ferdinand, is the outermost retrograde irregular satellite of Uranus. It follows a retrograde, modestly inclined but highly eccentric orbit. Its estimated radius is 6 km. Unfortunately we don't know much about this moon other than orbit and radius. We have also made a complete video specially on water moons Miranda, Ariel, and Umbriel while separate videos are in process for stunning moons Titania and Oberon. Please make sure to subscribe and follow for more unique and interesting videos on planets. Thanks for watching.